So Blackmagic Studios has what they call a HyperDeck shuttle. It's used for recording. You can actually connect your video camera directly to the shuttle and use a uh, high-speed uh, SSD drive in, in it. You do have to, there are limits on what you can use. Um, some of them don't work, some of them work great. So you're gonna probably have to spend a little money to get a really good one like I did. Um, right now, I'm looking more for quality stuff and I'm just now filming with the Canon camera. I'm not using the HyperDeck. Um, in just a minute, we'll do a HyperDeck and we'll set these, set these up side by side to see what kind of uh, quality, color, color quality, um, you can see that there is some color here in, in the imaging and I do have studio lights on the side. I've got natural light in the back, um, focused on myself. Everything else behind is a little bit blurred out, which is exactly what I would expect and what I, exactly what I want with my 55 millimeter lens. Uh, being that the camera is not a full a full size 35 millimeter uh, sensor, uh, means that this 55 millimeter lens um, is actually a little bit larger. So I'm not going to get into the technicalities of that. Um, mostly just for seeing how good the Canon uh, Canon quality versus doing the HyperDeck, and that's basically all I want. The audio is going to be the same. It's going to be from the same source. It is my iPhone microphone from a set of headphones that came that comes with the uh, built-in microphone. Cut off the headphones, uh, retained the microphone, plugged it into the phone, and I have now a microphone program which records in a very high quality um, format. And it actually works quite well. Much better than the other two microphones and way better than the Canon microphone on the camera. So if you need a good way to have a quick lavalier you can do a way to sync up your sound, which is probably the better thing to do anyway um, after the fact. Um, get one of these if you don't want to spend $3,000 for a lavalier microphone. Um, this one you can carry with you. Don't have to worry about how far away you are. Just take it, run it, sync it up later, and not worry about it. So now we're going we're gonna to switch here. We're going to go over to the HyperDeck shuttle and actually start recording in that. And that is actually going to record in ProRes HD, which is native to uh, Final Cut Pro 10, which I like because everything gets processed way faster for these large files. So hang in there. We'll be right back. We're back with the uh, HyperDeck shuttle recording. You can see over here on my monitor. Um, when everything goes idle, then we get the we get everything coming back up. It shouldn't be coming on here with the uh, background um, overlays on the camera, but they did come on, so I had to reset everything and start all over again. So we're back with the uh, HyperDeck shuttle. Um, maybe that'll be a little better focus there. Um, comes in a nice box. It's very robust, very heavy duty. Um, using the HyperDeck shuttle because I want to be able to use my camera to shoot in ProRes HD instead of the standard Canon format and also with a bit higher quality and it just basically records exactly what the sensor sees what I have set up. So my, my big screen TV isn't quite the color that the output is but it's pretty darn close. Um, I like it a lot. And mainly I'm just looking at the color and the quality of the two side by side. So I'm going to check everything on the computer. We're going to run it through Final Cut Pro 10 and do a couple quick little setups and see which ones look a little bit better versus the others. And, um, and I'm hoping that uh, I can get everything all put up, put up together and then clip and cut and connect my audio and video together so I can clip and cut and move things around uh, to show you guys the uh, the differences 
between the two. The audio should be the same. What I'm using is my iPhone. I have a little program on my iPhone and um, it was a three dollar program for doing recording in a very high quality recording. Uh, the microphone I'm using, got it connected up, uh, looks familiar, it's kind of old, but it is the uh, iPhone um, ear, earpiece with the built-in microphone. What I did is I just cut off the earpieces and left the microphone. And I have a mini, little mini um, clothespin that we use for hanging Christmas cards. And so I took one and super glued the little microphone to it. And now and it holds quite well. It now becomes my little lavalier microphone. Um, I also bought a program for the iPad. I actually have it on the iPhone too, but I can't use the two together. Um, it's a little clapper program that uh, does scene one, roll one, take five, take two, take whatever you want. Um, it's got a timer thing on it. Um, all that, all that good jazz, and um, click it. The little clapper opens up. Click it again, and it beeps, and um, gives a, a light flash, a beep, um, a movement down, and it works great. Um, don't need it on, so I just stop it, close it up, and put it away. Makes it real easy to sync up sound using that in uh, Final Cut Pro 10. So anyway, I just wanted to show that, that you can use the um, HyperDeck shuttle with a Canon camera, even a lower and lower quality one like the T3i, um, and get pretty good quality video as long as you have some good glass for your camera. Now going manual with manual lenses, manual focus, all that stuff, um, when you're shooting raw video like this, it's really nice because basically what you see is what you get. So you can set your lenses, you can set your apertures, you can do all that kind of stuff, set everything manual, and then play with your ISO settings a little bit, and it comes out pretty good. And I like it a lot. So I like playing with manual lenses anyway. So the automatic lens wasn't quite as good a quality as this, so I went to a manual lens and my Canon T3i with my Blackmagic HyperDeck Shuttle 2 as the recording medium. For going out in the field, what I need is a small HD monitor to take with me and connect up that I can actually hook onto the HyperDeck or onto my rigging around my camera or hook on the tripod where I can move it around so I can view it when I'm doing one-on-one -on -one with the camera and I have nobody else. Um, and a portable battery supply. I have a whole bunch of lithium batteries that I use for my electric car and I've got a bunch of batteries that are uh, 20 amp hour batteries and I'm going to be making a 12 volt uh, 20 amp hour pack and use that in conjunction with a little uh, inverter so I can have in the field power for everything that I need. Um, it'll actually be very lightweight. And, um, easy to take out in the field with you if you need to go. So if I want to go off on the end of my property, if I want to go up in the mountains, I can take all this rigging with me and get some really good video. So that's it. That's what we're doing. This is the review of the HyperDeck shuttle. I like it a lot. Make sure though, if you see your overlays on your camera or on your field monitor, it's going to record that too. The way you get rid of it is put Magic Lantern on your camera. Use Magic Lantern to turn off the overlays when idle. So once you get everything adjusted, get your focus, everything set up, it can go idle. And since I have the manual lens, what's cool is I can hit my focus button and it thinks that I just did something and then it fixes the issue. Everything goes away. And... Um, 
it works out good. It's not a difficult thing to do. But got to have that external monitor. So I'm hunting for you know, a little, little nine inch monitor um, that's HD quality. So I can take it with me, power it with my external power pack. So anyway, there you go. Hope you guys like it. And uh, ask questions, I'll be happy to answer them.